This video has been sponsored by Moog. Right here we have Moog Mariana. She's a duophonic modular bass synthesizer and she sounds absolutely lovely. Now on top of that juicy sound, Mariana is also somewhat of a game changer. You see, it's got that same modulation input and output system as the Moger Fogers, meaning you can integrate them. So you can use Mariana to modulate stuff inside the Moger Fogers, and you can use the Moger Fogers to modulate stuff inside Mariana. This is basically like having a modular system at your hands without it really being a modular. And as a sound designer, I can't even begin to tell you how grateful I am over having so much modulation at my fingertips. Yeah, it's a trend I wanna see become more trendier and I wanna see it catch on within the industry. Now, apart from the external modulation thingy you can do, there's a lot you can do from within Mariana itself. And I want to show you all of it because the synth foo is strong with this one. You see, earlier I mentioned that Mariana is a duophonic synthesizer. And the way it's able to be played like that duophonically is because it actually contains two entire monophonic synthesizers. And then you have different keyboard modes for these two synth layers. Now, when you play them together monophonically, you're actually working with six oscillators. That's two main oscillators, two subs, plus two noise generators. And on top of that, there's four filter modules in here. You got a low pass filter and a high pass filter with routing options. You got a cross filter. Even the sub oscillator has its own filter. And on top of that, we got a ton of modulation, three LFOs, three envelopes, two random sources. And I mean, all of this is times two because there's two synth layers. And on top of that, there is drive everywhere. There is drive in the mixers, there is drive in the output stage. And when it comes to the output stage, you can actually select the type of drive slash saturation you want. Wanna go with some tape? Wanna go with some tube? Tube, tube, wanna go with some tube? And to top off the top, you also have some analog sounding effects in here. And that includes the compressor. And on top of the 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 there is also a correlation meter in here. And if you don't know what that means, well, it's basically something you can use to make sure that your bass is compatible with the mono mix. Woo! I'm about to flirt my nerf here and blow a fuse. So let's just get into this.
Now, in this video, I am showing you the iOS version of Moog Mariana, but it is available for both desktop and laptop systems. In any case, in the end, internally, the synthesizer will work exactly the same whether you're using it on iOS or desktop and laptop systems. On iOS, you can run Moog Mariana as a standalone app, or you can use it as a plugin inside any DAW and or AUV3 enabled host. So the options are plenty, and it all depends on the type of workflow you want. If you need a classic timeline type workflow, then I suggest you use Mariana inside something like Cubasis or Logic Pro for iPad. Now, if you're more into a Groovebox-like workflow, then why not use it inside Dramble or BAM? Now, if you're like me, you might want to use it inside something like AUM. It allows for live mixing, experimentation, and jamming. And it feels like working with a modular system. And speaking of modular, if you're looking for a completely modular workflow, then you are in luck because MyRack recently got an update which through an in-app purchase provides the user with an AUV3 host module. So with this, you can load any type of AUV3 instrument and or effect and use that as a plugin inside your virtual Eurorack. As you can see, there's a multitude of ways of working with this wonderful synthesizer, and I'm sure you'll find the right type of workflow for you. But if you're one of those people who just want to sit down and play a really nice sounding synth, then let me round it off by saying Moog Mariana also supports MIDI, including MPE. So for the navigation, I want to focus on the upper bar. And first of all, I want to focus in right here where we see five page options. So these are page switches for the two main synth engine layers and their control pages where we have all of the modulation. If we look closely at synth page one and synth page two and compare them, we can see that they're identical. And it is the same with control page one and control page two. However, if we go to the output, we can see that for the output of Synth 1, we have a delay effect in the effect section. And for Synth 2, we have a chorus effect in the effect section. Now, if I tap over here, then we can open the preset browser, which is really nice because it allows the user to actually tag their presets, which makes it much more easier to find exactly what you're looking for. And if that's not enough, you can always favorite stuff by just tapping the star right next to the preset name up here. Now, Moog Mariana, of course, delivers with a bunch of really good sounding presets right out of the box. However, in the future, there will be even more available through in-app purchases from the preset store that you can find right over here. Now, sticking with the top bar of the synth, if we go to the cogwheel menu and we enter advanced and zoom in on duophonic, here is where you get to set the behavior of the synth when you're playing it. And when this is not enabled, Mariana will play as a monophonic synthesizer. 
However, if we enable the duophonic mode, it will essentially split up the two synth layers over two notes. Now inside the cogwheel menu we can also find some configuration options, some MIDI options, and also a way of sharing presets you've made inside Mariana. And if you need it, in the manual section we can find a link to a full online manual. However, there's a neat little quick help menu in here too, and you can reach it through this menu, but you don't actually have to do it this way. While you're in the synth, press the question mark at any time and the quick help will pop out like this. Now in this mode, if we tap a control, we will get the explanation for that control on the side here. I really like this because this allows us to keep using the synthesizer, learning about its features without ever leaving this window. Now there are still three more options in the upper bar that we haven't gone through and I will go more in depth on them later on in the modulation section in the video because they all have something to do with either modulation signals and or CV. Now I'll show you quickly here, if we go to the one with an M in it, it basically allows you to set up modulation for stuff. If I tap a knob here, we can see all the sources we have to work with, all of the internal stuff including the CVs. Now if we go over to the Epsilon menu, we can see a summary of all the modulation that has been set up in a patch. And if we go to the CV menu, we get to see the CV ins and outs. And yes, this is the system that allows us to take CV outputs from the Mogafogers and use them as CV inputs inside Mariana. And it also allows us to take the modulation sources inside Moog Mariana and output them to be used as CV inputs inside the Mogafogers. I just love this stuff. Now there is this one thing I want you to focus on and it is this four letter label here. It's a randomly generated label that gets generated every time you load in Mariana as a plugin inside a DAW. And it's here to help you identify which instance you're actually working with. You see in the CV list, when you're trying to select inputs and outputs, it can get hard to select the correct one, especially when you're using multiple instances of the same type of plugin. But if you look at this code here, this will be unique for each instance. And so that way it will be easier to find the one you're looking for in the CV list. So since there are two synth pages and they're both identical, I'll only be going over one of them. And we're gonna start with the dual oscillator right here. Now when it comes to pitch and frequency, you control the main frequency of both oscillators with the frequency control over here, but you can detune the second oscillator with the OSC2 detuning knob. On top of that, you got three octave modes for the second oscillator, and the glide control acts as a portamento control. It basically decides how fast or how quickly pitch will fall in between notes. <laughs> Now if we switch the topic over to waveforms and wave shaping, there is a lot that can be done in here with just a few controls and I absolutely love that. 
If we look at the wave shape control, we have five distinct waveforms to choose from. Sine wave, triangle wave, sawtooth waveform, pulse, and in the middle here we have a shark, which is the result of a triangle and a sawtooth waveform having relations. Now on top of this, we have a duty cycle control. <laughs> duty. And this can be viewed as a pulse with control. However, it actually does more than that because it doesn't just change the width for the pulse. No, it does it for all of the waveforms, which makes it very interesting because you can get some interesting timbres out of your oscillators with just a tweak of this knob. Now on top of that, we can also offset the face for the second oscillator with the OSC2 face control. And on top of that, we also have a hard sync mode, which is super nice, because with that we can make some really nasty sync leads. I love movement in sound, but when you have movement between dual oscillators in a bass sound, that can create the feeling of a patch kind of losing energy. And if you don't want that to happen, you can just activate the key reset, which will reset the sync of the oscillators with every note press. All right, so moving on, but sticking with the generator side of the synth, we have the sub oscillator down here. You can offset the face a whole 360 degrees around. You got three different waveforms, sine wave, triangle, and also pulse. And then we've got a frequency offset. Now two of these modes here, the minus one octave or minus two octaves, will just play X amount of octaves beneath the played note. However, there's a linked mode here, and this will actually link the frequency of the sub oscillator to the dual oscillator. So if you change the frequency with the frequency knob in the dual oscillator, you will also change the frequency of the sub oscillator. Now there is another generator in here, and that is the noise generator in the upper left corner of the synth. This one gives you the unfiltered white noise when you've got the knob straight up here in the middle like this, but when you turn it counterclockwise, you get low pass filtered noise, such as pink and red, and if you tweak it clockwise, you get high pass filtered noise, like blue and purple.
Now, with so many generators all in one place, we need some sort of way of bringing it all together. And that's being done in the mixer. And this mixer is special because it has a functionality similar to the good old Moog CP3 mixer, where it can actually overdrive the signal and basically add saturation to your sound. And the way it works is that when you're tweaking the knob between zero and seven, you're just attenuating levels. But as soon as you go above seven, this is when the overdrive drive circuit starts working and the more you tweak it up the creamier it gets until you get almost a distorted sound. Yeah it's like built-in drive in the mixer. Now, if we look at the right half of Moog Mariana, we can see Moog really flexing their East Coast synthesis muscles because they've put a lot of filters in here. And the way that you can route them and mix them up, well, it makes stuff very interesting. But we have to understand how the signals are being routed through these filters in order to be able to utilize them properly. So we're beginning at the bottom with the sub oscillator, which gets sent into the mixer and then always gets sent to the sub os filter. And this is a multi-mode filter, which can be switched between high pass, band pass and low pass modes. So there's a lot of filtering that can be done just for the sub oscillator. Yeah, all of that is simple enough, but it gets a little bit more complicated when we look at the noise generator and dual OSCs and what happens to those signals. You see, there are two filter modules, a low pass filter and a high pass filter. And then if we look over here, we have three different orders for them or three different routings. So if we look at the first one, the serial one, what happens here is that the noise generator and dual oscillator gets fed into the mixer, summed up and then sent into the low pass filter first and then directly into the high pass filter. Now if we switch over to the parallel mode, then both the noise generator and the dual oscillators gets sent into the low pass filter and high pass filter at the same time. And then those outputs are being summed up. And we're not quite done there because there's a third mode called HPF noise. And what happens here is that it splits up the signal. So only the dual oscillators gets routed into the low pass filter. And then only the noise generator gets routed into the high pass filter. Yeah. 
But if you thought that Moog was done flexing their filter muscles, you're wrong. You're so wrong. You have no idea how wrong you are. Remember I said that there are actually four filters in here. Well, I was wrong. There's five. You see, the oscillator crossover also contains two filters. On one side, you have the sub oscillator going through a sub oscillator filter, and then that's being outputted into the crossover. And then on the other side, you have the noise generator and dual oscillator getting fed through the high pass filter and low pass filter. And then that output is getting fed into the crossover. So sub on one side, everything else, on the other side. And then if you activate the crossover and tweak the crossover knob clockwise, you are then applying a high pass filtering onto the noise gen and dual oscillator side. However, if you tweak it counterclockwise, you are then adding a low pass filter onto the sub signal side. <laughs> One hundred percent pure Moog filter power times two because there's two synth engines in here. Next up, we're gonna move on to the control page. But before I do that, let's just skim over the voicing mode real quick because there's one thing in here I think is pretty neat. In the voicing section, we can find legato modes. We got re-triggering, legato, and add. And it's basically how, well, Mariana behaves when you're playing new notes. And on top of that, you also have a stereo spread for the dual oscillators. And you control that with this knob here. Now, right beneath that, there is an accent switch. And when turning this on, it will actually drive the envelopes a little bit harder. And not only that, when you're triggering notes pretty hard and the velocity exceeds 96, it will actually create an accented note. And this behavior, this accent thing, well, it can be used as a source to control different things in the synth. I just wanted to make sure that you take notice of this. Now, since controller page one and two are basically identical, we only need to look at one of them, which is going to be control page one. And if we look closer here, we can see that we pretty much got multiples of the same thing. Starting on the left side, we've got three identical LFOs. You can change the rate for all LFOs from 0.5 up to 50 Hertz. And then you can also sync the rates to the tempo. Now you can restart the cycling of the waveforms with the keyboard reset and you've got five different wave shapes to choose from. Sine wave, triangle, ramp up saw, ramp down saw, and pulse. And finally, we get to offset the face of the waveforms up to 360 degrees. Now there is a lot that can be done with the LFOs and there is a lot of stuff that you can control but I'll go more into depth with that in the modulation section of this video. Let's just have a look at the middle of the screen where we can find, well, three almost identical envelopes. 
Both the filter envelope and the amp envelope is of the ADSR type. And then we have the mod envelope, which have two more controls, a delay, which delays the signal before the envelope actually goes through all of the envelope stages. And in between the attack and decay stage, there's a hold stage, which if you set it to 10 milliseconds, will hold the signal for 10 milliseconds before it then moves on to the decay stage and on and on. Now, in an initial state, the mod envelope is not being used inside the synth unless you've got some modulation set up. So it doesn't have a basic function that is already tied up somewhere in the synth. However, the filter envelope and amp envelope already do have functions. The amp envelope controls the amplifier output for the synth, so you don't really have to think about what you're doing here. You just tweak the controls to your taste, basically. However, the filter envelope does have a control and you can find that in the filter modules. It's the one called EG amount, which stands for envelope generator amount. And so when you're tweaking these three knobs, you're basically telling the low pass filter to move according to how the filter envelope has been set up. One thing to note here with the envelopes is that you've got some pretty nice ranges to work with when it comes to the time that each stage has. All of the attack stages have up to 10 seconds. So if you want a long attack, you can really have that. Same with decay and release. They actually provide you with up to 30 seconds of time. So technically you could have a sound swelling in and fading out for a little bit over a minute. Lastly, we get to look at my most favorite types of generators, which are the random generators. There's two of them, they're identical, and in them we can control the rate from zero up to 50 hertz. We can sync them to the tempo, and then we've got three different modes. We got sample and hold, noise, and purlin. And the purlin behaves kind of like a sample and hold, only it's more smooth. And if stuff isn't smooth enough for you, you also have a slew that you can turn on that smooths the signal out even more. <laughs> The output page is where we get to do our final tweaks to our overall sound coming out of Mariano. And there's quite a lot to do here. And if we start by just looking at the individual effects for Synth 1 and Synth 2, then both of them can have some sort of saturation applied to them. And there are three modes of saturation you can add, either tube, tape or drive. Oh, 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 
when it comes to the other type of effect you can apply to Synth 1 and Synth 2, they're actually different depending on which synth you're working with. You see, for Synth 1, you have a delay effect where you get to set the delay time, which can be synced to tempo. You get to set the delay feedback and also the filtering of the delay tail. You have a mix knob right here, and you can actually run this delay in both mono or stereo mode. Now for synth 2, we have a chorus, and here we get to set the rate, which can also be synced to the tempo. We get to set the depth, the filtering of the chorus, and then we have a mix knob, and then we have a chorus expand that basically widens the space and depth of the chorus effect. Now one thing to note here is that I myself have had sessions where I've tweaked sounds in a synth and then realized that, oh crap, I was in the wrong synth. I actually wanted to use the chorus effect and I only have access to the delay effect. Well, in those cases, there is a fix for it. And you go up here to this little icon and you get this menu here where you can copy synth 1 to synth 2 or copy synth 2 to synth 1 or just swap the parameters between the synths around. Now if we shift our focus to the middle of the synth, we have level, panning and also mute controls for both synth 1 and synth 2. We got a main volume output and on top of that you've got a compressor and this compressor even has two modes. It's got an FET button here. And FET, or FET as it's often called, is a type of transistor-based circuit design. It's a type of compression that works really, really fast, so it's good on snappy, aggressive sounds. So often it's used for drums, percussion, things like that, where you want to preserve snappiness and aggressiveness in sounds. Now a neat detail here is that Moog has provided us with two view meters for monitoring the level output of Mariana. But that's not the only thing that the view meter view can do, because if we tap it just once, we can switch out the view, and on the right we get a gain reduction view meter, which shows us how much level reduction we're getting in the compressor. And the metering on the left is a correlation meter, which helps us with checking our output for, well, compatibility with the mono mix. As long as we stay within this area of the metering, we are compatible with the mono mix. Mono mix, mono mix, monogamous, Mongolia, minuscule, muscular tension in my peep. 
Let's talk modulation targets. And if we have a look at the synth page, they're both identical. So yeah, everything in green is stuff we get to modulate and everything with the red X's we do not get to modulate. And those include things like the buttons and also to my disappointment, the wave shape controls because I really love modulating stuff like that. Yeah. Now, if we have a look at the control page and we do the same overlay, well, everything in green, we get to modulate. Everything in red, we don't get to modulate. Again, that includes the buttons and the wave shape controls. But if we look at the envelopes, we get to modulate every stage in the envelope. And for those of you who are into expressive keyboard playing, this should really make you happy because this allows you to set up patches where you can, with MPE for instance, control stuff like attack rate or release rate, having it change with every note. And that makes for a very expressive patch. <laughs> Lastly, we have the output page and here we get to modulate pretty much everything apart from the buttons and also the saturation type. And that kind of made sense because I think that would be way too jarring to switch the saturation type in the middle of playing a patch. Now, inside Mariana, we have LFOs, we have envelopes, and we have random sources. Now, this is basically what an LFO does. Now, I'm using a triangular waveform here to show you what happens with a knob or, for instance, a fader, which we have only one off in Mariana, but yeah, still, just want to give you a visual representation, even though Moog has done a really good job showing a visual representation when you actually do set up modulation in here. If we use an envelope, well, this is what happens to either a knob or a fader. And in this case, I've chosen to draw up the modulation envelope just to show you what happens with the uh, delay and also hold in there. Plus all of the regular ADSR stages. Now, the random source is different though, because here with a sample on hold, well, it behaves like a pulse waveform with an identity crisis. It doesn't really know where it wants to be because it's random. However, if you don't want a jagged movement like this, you can use the Perlin mode, which behaves like this, only the signal moves smoothly in between the varying amounts of signal strengths. And if you want to limit that signal somehow or smooth it out even more, you can add a slew to it. It doesn't really stop there because you can also use modulation wheels on keyboards, you can use velocity, you can use MPE. There's even more because when you start working with CV and Moger Foggers, you've got even more modulation. And if you want an overview of everything you get in there, I did an extremely in-depth video on the Moger Foggers a little while back, also sponsored by Moog, and I'll be linking to it down in the pinned comment under this video and in the description. Now, with all of that said, the next thing I want to explain when it comes to signal basics is unipolar versus bipolar. So if I put a unipolar signal up here and a bipolar signal down here, we can see that the unipolar movement works within one pole from zero up to plus and down. Now, a bipolar signal works within two poles. You got zero in the middle here and then you got a minus and a plus. And as you can see, even though both of these two LFOs here are moving at the same rate, the bipolar one makes a larger movement in a cycle than the unipolar one.
right here we've got AUM, but you can of course use any DAW you want. But I've done this setup because we can do multiple things now. I've got a keyboard down here, I've got Mariana here, I've got a Mogerfoger delay over here. So baby's first patch, we're gonna make the frequency knob inside the dual oscillator wobble in pitch with the help of an LFO. And then we're gonna control the signal strength with the modulation wheel on the keyboard. So we're gonna open up the modulation source menu by tapping the M and knowing from my overlay, we cannot modulate the buttons or the wave shape controls, but everything else. And we wanted to control the frequency knob. So we tap that to highlight it. And as soon as we do that, we get access to all of the modulation sources. So everything from the global menu, like velocity, mod wheel, pressure, MPE, we've got everything from control page one, control page two, and also the CV. And that's the stuff coming from Mogerfogers. But I'll show you that in a little bit. So we're gonna scroll back up here to the controllers and select the LFO. Now we can either tap the circle like this and add modulation instantly, or we can just tap the name and bring up the entire menu. Here we can turn modulation on or off, and we can also set the behavior. And when it comes to pitch, I like using bipolar movements because that allows you to modulate the frequency equally on both sides of the center frequency. So select bipolar, and as you can see, it's pretty extreme because the amount is at 100, but we'll keep it there. Only we are gonna go to the control page one and pull down on the rate for LFO one, so it doesn't move quite as wildly. Let's go back to synth page one, and we can see that that's more manageable. The next thing we're gonna do is to add the modulation wheel as a control for the strength of the signal. So we tap LFO one again, while we have the frequency knob highlighted like this, and then we go down to the control page. And if anyone watching is a keyboard player, if you wanna build expressive keyboard patches, then this menu is something you're gonna be interested in because here you can add keyboard signals for controlling the modulation inside your routings. Now, like I said, I wanna be able to control the strength of this with the mod wheel. So we select the mod wheel and we pull the strength up to 100%. And if you were paying attention, then you saw that as soon as I did that, the modulation of the frequency control stopped. Does it mean we broke it? No. If you look at the keyboard down here, the modulation wheel is turned all the way down. So if I turn it all the way up again, we can see the modulation increasing and increasing until we reach the maximum. All right, so now I just wanna show you something really cool. If we look under the controller stuff, we can see something called function. And if we open this up, we get a bunch of awesome nerdy synth things that we can use to further control how our signal behaves. So right now we have a sine wave working on this, right? But what happens if we use, for instance, an exponential curve as a controller Now, we're not gonna be using any controllers for this, but I do have a tutorial on how to make a drum track, and in that one, we will be using some of the function stuff in here. But we'll look at that later. Next up, we're gonna add some Mogerfoger modulation to this. So I'm gonna close this menu, and I'm gonna open up the CV menu. And in this case, we have an instance of Moog Mariana, and we have an instance of MF104 Delay. So if we go in here where it says CV in one and open this menu up, we can see that at the top here, we have this instance of Mariana in the list first. And yes, you can literally cross connect Mariana to itself this way, it's crazy. Well, we can either scroll down or just close this menu. And as soon as we do that, we can see that we have that instance of the Mogerfoger over here. And remember, if you are working with several instances of the same type of plugin, then finding the right instance is done by checking the code in that instance. Either way, here we only have one Mogerfoger. It's outputting an LFO, and what we're gonna do is select it. And now that we've selected it, it is now available in the list for modulations. And what we're gonna do with this is go to the control page one, open up the modulation sources, tap on LFO one rate, scroll all the way down to CV and select that first CV input. 
And so now we're using the LFO inside the Mogul Fogger to control the speed or rate of LFO1 inside Mogul Mariana. Now we're gonna limit the amount that it can move to about a few percents. So if we close this down, go to Synth 1, we can see the modulation now happening here. And we can get even crazier now because the next thing we can do is open up the CV again, go to the control voltage out, select the first CV out, and here we're gonna select Synth 1 LFO1 as the output, meaning this is now available to be used inside any of the Moog Foggers or another instance of Moog Mariana. So we go to the CV inputs of the Moger Fogers and let's tap the LFO rate. And in this list, we can see Moog Mariana right there. And we select the first input. And so now we're basically cross connecting the LFOs to one another in both Mariana and the Moger Foger. So they're modulating each other and it's starting to get wild in here. I love how scuffed that sounds. I absolutely love synthesizers and I love synthesizers that gives me a lot of tools to work with and Mariana really does that. And in order to be able to make a drum pattern like this one, Well, in order to make something like that from the press of just one note without the help of sequencers, you need a lot of LFOs because an LFO to me is actually a simple two-step sequencer. Well, when you have six of them and you can sync them all to a clock running in a DAW and you're able to shift their faces around a bunch of different waveforms to work with and functions in the modulation system that can shape those signals, you have a really good recipe for making awesome drum tracks being played by just holding down one note. Now, in order for this to work though, you do have to have Mariana loaded inside a DAW with the clock running. Because if you run Mariana in a standalone mode, even in its synced mode, stuff might go out of whack. But as long as you got it loaded inside a DAW with the clock running, the timing of the LFOs are excellent. So we're gonna go to synth page one and we're gonna make the synth drone. we are going to have to modulate the mixer levels ourselves because we want this patch to be playing at all times when we hold down our note, but we don't have a sequencer constantly triggering new notes. And since we don't have that, we don't have any triggering of envelopes. Well, I pulled down the level and next we're gonna modulate this with an LFO. And to get to modulation, we can press up here and select that knob or you can long press on a knob too. That also works and that opens up the menu and gives you the sources. Now for this one, we're gonna go with LFO one here, but as you can see, this movement, it's not a drumming movement. So what we're gonna do is go to control page one and we're gonna first pull down on the speed of this thing. And then we're also gonna change the waveform. That's more like it. We're gonna change the wave shape of the oscillator too. And as you can hear, it's a bit sharp at the beginning of that sound. So we're gonna filter that off with the low pass filter. But a little bit of the click in there is good for the drum sound because it makes it sound more like a drum. However, the movement is very linear because we're using a ramp down waveform for the LFO. So it's gonna move linearly down but we don't want that. We want a curved shape because that's usually how drum sounds are built up. And we can add that behavior by filtering the LFO signal. 
Now we go into the LFO menu here with the mixer level still selected and we go down to functions and here is all the powerful stuff. And in your case, I would suggest trying these things out, seeing what they do, looking at the shape of the modulation signal and how it behaves on the knob here. But I already know from experience that I want to use a high pass filtering on this signal to get the right behavior. So now we already have more of a drumming sound. The next thing we're gonna do is to use that same curve to actually modulate the frequency of the dual oscillator. So we long press on the frequency knob here, and then we select LFO1. But as you can see, the modulation doesn't look the same as it does on the mixer knob, even though we're using the same LFO. Well, it is because we need to add that high pass filtering for that signal. So we're gonna add that. And there we go, we have a curved shape going on that pitch now. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna add a little hi-hat to this and we're gonna do that with the noise. So we're gonna go to the noise level knob and then we're gonna use another LFO because we want another rate for this one. So we're gonna select LFO 2. And that's not quite right. So we're gonna go to the LFO and we're gonna pull down on the rate on this thing. And we're also gonna change the waveform to a triangle waveform. The next thing we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna curve this signal. And what's so cool here is that we can change the behavior of this hi-hat by going back to the controller page and changing again the rate of the LFO, but not only that, but also the face. We can make it go backwards like this. All right, so we're almost there. We almost have a drum track playing, but we're missing something. We're missing a snare. And for this, since we're already using synth one for bass drum and hi-hat, well, I kind of want to keep it there because I can do this and put this in HPF noise mode. And that way I can filter the hi-hat with the high-pass filter any way I want. And I can still use the low-pass filter to filter off the bass drum kick. So if we go to synth two and we start working on our snare here, we can then use this entire section to shape the snare sound. Because here we need two parts to make that sound. We need both the dual oscillator and the noise generator playing at the same time. The next thing we're gonna do is just go to the output and we're gonna add some tube saturation on both synthesizers. Just add it up like that. Pull down on the volume a little bit. So imagine what you can do when you start adding a little bit more to this. The 
The modulation is strong with this one, and it's a good reason to get the synth. Not only does it sound good, but it can do so much for you. Inside the Mogafogers, there are some stuff that you don't have inside Mariana, and inside Mariana, there's stuff you don't have inside the Mogafogers. And one example is the envelope follower. And an envelope follower is basically something like this. It listens to an audio signal, and then it creates an envelope signal from the dynamic content in that waveform. Here in Mogafoger MF109, we do have one of those. And as you can see here, I'm running Moog Mariana through this effect. So the output from Mariana is going to affect that envelope follower. And then we can use that signal back inside Mariana. And if we go to CV, we can see that we have the MF109 envelope follower output right there. And so I'm just going to do something simple. I'm going to go to the frequency here by long pressing on it. And then I'm just going to go down to CV, select CV1, enable that. And at 100%, it's going to be too much. It's all jittery and stuff because it's following the audio coming from Moog Mariana itself. And we have a delay on, so that makes it even more interesting. I like that better, but I'm just going to offset the signal a little bit here. To make sure that the pitch falls right back to zero again. And that's an interesting way of generating a kind of random signal that can modulate stuff. And you can use this to modulate whatever you want. Now, if we work the other way around, what is it inside Mariana that we don't have inside the Mogafogers? Well, envelopes. We do not have envelope generators. And here we've got three of them, including a very powerful one, which is the mod envelope, which also has delay and hold in there. And we can use that to modulate stuff inside the Mogafogers. So we go to the control voltage out, we open this up, and we go down here to, to Synth 1 Envelope Mod. And now we can use that inside the Mogafoger. Now there's another cool thing you can do with Mogafoger integration, and that is you can translate signals from another modular, like say Myrac, into Mariana to be used for modulation purposes. I know this is so dirty, but basically I'm using Myrac here, and then I'm using a uh, multi-audio output, and so I'm routing the um, output from Befaco's Rampage as a module here inside Myrac out through these two nodes here and then they're going through two instances of the MF109 saturator. So yeah, basically I'm sending this modulation signal out as an audio signal and then that is going into the envelopes and affecting those and then I'm using the envelopes inside Moog Mariana here. <laughs> It's nothing beautifully sounding, but it's something I just put up really quickly to show you what you can do with this. Because of how deep Mariana is, even in a video of this length, I'm not going to be able to talk about everything, even though I really did try. Well, here are a few things I want to mention. So if we go to control page one here, and we have a look in the upper right corner of all of the modulation sources, we can see a squiggly little arrow line. Now, if we press this, it opens up the mod summary and it gives us a button where it says new destination. Now, if we press this, it actually shows us all the destination points. And you might be wondering, why didn't I show you this earlier? Well, to be honest, I am recording this half a day before the video goes out. And so, yeah, for a month, I've been working with this wonderful synthesizer and I've just completely missed this fact. 
The next thing I want to mention is something inside the cogwheel menu. So if we open that up and we go down to configuration, there is an option for silent preset changes, which is great if you're a performing artist working with Mariana on stage. And I mean, I've used so many synthesizers where they don't have anything like this. And so when you go from one preset to another, you have to make sure to bring down the volume because this synthesizer just goes haywire between presets. And here we have an option for minimizing that. Now sticking around inside the cogwheel menu, if we go down to MIDI control, there is a way for you to map your hardware MIDI controllers to Moog Mariana. So you simply just tap this option and it puts Mariana in a MIDI learning mode. So if you have a MIDI hardware controller connected to Moog Mariana, then simply just activate this mode, then push a button, twist a knob, slide a fader on your hardware MIDI controller and you're good to go. Final thoughts. Well, I want to mention this. Graphical design, functionality, and sound are equally as important to me. And with Moog, you always get the full package because, I mean, they, they do it all the way with all of those things. And I love the skeuomorphism in their apps. And if we zoom in on Moog Mariana at the chassis here, we can see some smudges, we can see some fingerprints and stuff like that. I absolutely love that. And if we look at the knobs, it, they always look gorgeous because of how the light plays with the shape of the knob and the buttons. Look at the buttons. When you flip the switch here, the light actually reflects accurately in the button. And if we look at the Mogafogers, little details like this. It's not necessary for the functionality of the synth, but it makes the experience that much better. Now, when it comes to the sound, Mariana sounds absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's amazing how good it sounds. And as a bass synth, it is great, but it has so much in it, so much modulation. It, the oscillators track really well in higher octaves. It's not limited or anything, so you can still do more with it, which is why I have been doing everything almost but bass in this video. The most fun I've had has been making those one note drum patches. Now, I actually don't have that many things to complain about, but there is this one thing that kept kind of nagging me, you know, in the back of my head, and it has to do with the output page and the effects and the way that you can only use the delay for synth one and the chorus for synth two. And even though there is an option for switching the parameters around between synth one and synth two, you know, sometimes I would just love to be able to use a delay on both synthesizers at the same time, maybe two delays in there, right? So you could have like two different settings for them or two choruses, why not? But I've been able to work with it and it also forced me to be more creative because now that the effects were locked like this, I often built my patches in a way where Synth 2 would fit really well with a chorus sound and where Synth 1 would benefit from the delay effect. So yeah, in the end, it wasn't really a problem for me. In the end, I'm super happy with how well Mariana performs, the depth of the modulation system, how great it sounds. Yeah, I think it's a great synthesizer. And I think that Moog did a great job on this new IP of theirs because it didn't exist before. And so it doesn't exist as a hardware synthesizer. And if they ever make a hardware version of this, I want one. In the end, I highly recommend this synthesizer. And if you want to go and grab it, I suggest you go down under this video and check the pinned comment. I've also put links in the description, but no one checks that, so yeah. Now, I want to give out a massive thank you to Moog who sponsored this video. I'm always very, very happy to see large companies support smaller creators on YouTube because I might be well known within the iOS music community, but on YouTube, I'm still a very small channel. So I'm always humbled by the fact that some bigger companies out there are willing to sponsor small creators like myself. Thank you, Moog. But those are not the only sponsors I have because I also have you here, my audience. And I want to thank you so much for taking part in this uh, month long project that I've been working on. Many, many hours went into this video, about 400 hours, and I'm absolutely beat. I can't wait until the Christmas holidays because uh, I've saved up a lot of, uh, well, this is what I've done. I've been collecting 
panels and circuit boards and components and uh, basically sourced uh, a whole lot of modules and I've got four modules or even five modules to build for my modular system. So yeah, that is an ongoing project and you'll be seeing some content about that next year once I get it up to a more finished state because it's a slow job because uh, I don't have that much money, which is interesting in itself because it is a challenge. So yeah, I want to thank you for just being here and supporting me and liking the video, which you are probably doing right now, pressing that thumbs up. Now, for those of you who are hardcore watchers, there will of course be a Moo song at the end. In the meantime, I love you so much. And as usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Moo, 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 moo. Don't know what to do. I am constipated. Don't know what to do. Moo, 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 moo. I am constipated. Moo, 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 moo. Don't know what to do. Moo, moo, moo.